Kia ora whanau. how's it going? Welcome back to Word on Monday today. Uh, we are looking at um, the I am statements that uh, Jesus uh, discloses and declares about himself in the Gospel of John. And we are coming up to the second one today. Um, we're going to be looking at um, the statement in John 8 verses 12 where Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Um, join us today in Word on Monday. Well, we're looking at um, uh, the second of a number of statements through the Gospel of John where Jesus um, actually self-discloses his identity if people are able to hear it. Uh, last time we talked about um, the I am in relationship to um, I am the bread of life. And now we're looking at uh, chapter 8 verses 12, the I am statement that Jesus talks about um, as I am the light of the world. You would have seen a photo um, on uh, before, um, uh, just after my introduction, where we had a carved picture. Uh, this is one of the po that were established um, down in um, Kerry Baptist College, and it's called Te Ao Marama. Um, and um, it's in reference to uh, where Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And here... Um, there's a number of things that are happening, uh, but in the context of the discussion and the in the in the chapter that we've been in, so we had the introduction from chapters one to four of Jesus being acquainted with his disciples and also the relationship that he has with the Father, that he and the Father are one, and you see this kind of in the beginning type of narrative in John chapter one, which harkens back to the Old Testament and in particular the Hebrew scriptures um, and the um, uh, letters of um, Moses in relationship to the Genesis account where you see this uh, in the beginning type of, of a story. Very similar patterns going on there. Um, we've talked about historically in my word on Mondays and a number of series about the woman and well chapter 4 um, and uh, here um, last time I mentioned that uh, there's, a, there's a close connection between the woman at the well and the water image and the bread of life, um, both in regards to food and water statements that Jesus says, those who drink of me will never thirst and those who eat of me will never go hungry. And so now we've come to the second part and it's on the, it's on the back end of a, a number of discussions that have unfolded uh, from chapters 4, um, 5 and 6 through to now in chapter 8 where um, after the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus um, has disclosed who he is to those that are listening and, and pretty much uh, is calling people to come closer to him. And in that calling of him, uh, people coming closer to him, he also tells them what it is to be a follower. You're to drink and eat of me. And, and for a number of them, this becomes a bit of a challenge. And so you see... Uh, um, in chapter 7 uh, a number of folk falling away and, and saying oh this is actually a bit too hard and, and they and they move away now the back end of this particular discussion is the validity of Jesus statements um, and um, you've had the festival of tabernacles you've had um, the story where he's teaching at the Mount of Olives and back down at the temple and he does this miraculous um, uh, fixture where he forgives um, a woman who was caught in adultery and right at the end of that particular statement or conversation that Jesus has with this lady um, again he goes to her like he did to the woman at the well he doesn't actually deal with the gender issues that's going on but he deals with her he strips it all away and he strips away all the religious nuances and all the religious activities and all the laws. He strips it all away to, and says, uh, has anyone judged you? Now I'm paraphrasing this. And in verse 11, he says, neither will I condemn you. And uh, here Jesus is acting in a way that's demonstrating the love of God. Um, in the Gospels, Jesus is not presenting himself. He's actually presenting the heart of the Father. Revelation is where he presents himself. And in Revelation, he's the judge. He's going to come and judge those who, who, who do things against the church. Uh, but here, 
um, and throughout the Gospels, Jesus is actually presenting the heart of the Father. He's giving a physical evidence through him that this is what the Father's heart, this is how the Father really uh, loves humanity, loves people, men, women, children. Um, he's demonstrated that love through his actions. And in this case, um, he, he confronts the religious practices of the day. He confronts the man-made laws of the day and the meanness that people have um, by demonstrating his love for people, and in particular case, this woman. Um, that neither will I, neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Now go and leave your life of sin. Now he's not telling her not to go carry on and do whatever she was doing. He's saying, I'm not condemning you, but in that place of not being condemned, you have to stop sinning. You have to leave what you're doing. So yet she may have been an adulterer, she may have been all these things, and by the law she may have been, it may have been right for what they're doing, but in the case of what God is trying to do with humanity, with you and I, he doesn't condemn us on that. He, can, he, he wants us to, to be in a relationship with him, uh, and his response is that in the places of our most vulnerability, he extends love. But then he calls us to, to change our habits and to be transformed. Now, this stirs up a whole lot of problems to the religious, to those that like the law, to those that like to follow policies and procedures, those who like to, to keep things in a box and say, this is who's in the group and who's not in the group. And here, Jesus confronts that by what he does with the woman. He confronts it by what he's saying about the I am statements. So in his disclosure... Um, firstly, he's confronting him about the I am statements by him saying that the Father and I are one uh, and using this term as a disclosure of his own identity, he's confronting the religious establishment. He's confronting the elites um, and it's actually throwing, throwing them into turmoil. And, and he brings up another point here. Um, in relationship to the testament because these, these religious leaders say isn't he just the, the the carpenter's boy isn't he just from Nazareth who the heck does he think he is who is this and here uh, Jesus again brings in the second statement around the I am when Jesus spoke to them to the people he said I am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life Again, the Pharisees challenged him, and it, and it carries on, this whole discourse about um, Jesus' identity and the validity of what he's doing. Now, if you read through John and later on in John's epistles, you see this, this kind of uh, binary contrast that he does um, between light and darkness. You see this theme between the spirit and non-spirit um, and his activities that, uh, that John uses a lot. And it's a, it's a recurring theme. Um, and here in the midst of um, here was a woman that was about to be stoned to death the most dark place you could be let alone the sin that's going on um, and, but it's in that place of darkness that Jesus comes and this idea of light uh, arkens back to the, the chapter 1 of John where we see um, the light came to the world but the world did not recognise it um, and, if, and if you'd go back a bit further in the sense of the whole biblical narrative in Genesis 1 it says in the beginning God created the world in the beginning he created the light let there be light and so Jesus is that light um, and in that instance in the midst of the light being created creation was formed and in the midst of light coming into being from the te or from te kore te po ki te ki ao ki te ao marama from the from the the period of darkness from the period of nothingness eventually evolved into into light. While in the in the biblical Christian story, uh, we see this this imagery of creation being in this place of chaoticness and chaos, and sound is moving, and then light comes into and brings order to the chaos and that's what light does 
Jesus is bringing order to the religious life. He's bringing order to our social life and how we engage with each other. He's bringing order to the things around us where there was once darkness. And so what does light do? It reveals things. Um, and in the midst of the conversations and the social engagements and the and the challenges that Jesus is doing to the religious establishment and to the political elite, um, he is saying in relationship to truth, he is the light. Now we need this message today. This message of light shining in darkness. Why? If we turn over to Romans chapter 1 and read through that whole chapter there, you see not a progression of humanity, but a degression. There is a unfolding habitual habit of humanity decaying. It's the story of humanity. If you look through the history of the world and all great empires, you'll see that they'll rise on the back of rebellion or, or revolution and, and this aspiration for, uh, and quite often in power struggles where the, the marginalized and those that were on the fringes come into political power and they, they, they have this big revolution and change the world. Uh, and then over time, you'll see it decreases. But Jesus is the light. And his promise is that whoever follows him will never walk in darkness. We have a world that is walking in darkness. From the 60s on, particularly in the West, we've turned away from God. Um, our, our nations, our communities, and our societies have flipped up the moral norms that Scripture lays out before us, starting from the Ten, the, the, the ten Commandments, um, starting with the teaching that we see in Matthew in, in regards to the, the uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount, this ethic that was used to be so strong in our society has been pulled and ripped apart and deconstructed to put something else up that actually has no life. Uh, we can't be surprised why we have um, social upheavals that are going on today because people have turned away from God. So maybe this week in, in our journey together, um, in our whanos and your combat buddies and your small groups and your workplace and that, may you be the light in those situations that you find yourselves. Another part of scripture teaches that uh, I have created you to be salt and light in the world. So not only do we come to Jesus who's the source of the light and later on in Revelation we see in the, when the, the new Jerusalem is established the sun and moon are gone and the light that shines that gives light to the world is actually from the throne room and is Jesus Christ himself who lights the world and gives warmth and so forth. Let light be your driving force. Let light be the one that draws you closer to our Heavenly Father. Let the plumb line and the measurements be Jesus Christ, not our own thoughts or our own emotions or what makes us feel well and happy, but rather Jesus. Come closer to him. Don't be like the other disciples in the world that uh, they don't like the things that Jesus says. It's too confronting. It means they have to give up this or give up that. But rather come to him and allow his light to shine. I remember some years back training in Waiuru and you would uh, you'd be woken up just before dawn and you're in harbour and uh, and if you've done sentry at night in Waiuru um, and maybe from two to four window that's your job and you're lying there cold and uh, the mist and snow and it's all falling on you but in that morning time when you wake up just before dawn is the darkest part of the day but light comes and then all of a sudden on the horizon you'll see the sun piercing the darkness and light is revealed and all of a sudden this gush of heat goes out onto the, the plateaus and reveals what's there let the light shine in your heart 
be like the woman that Jesus had just finished speaking to in the most darkest place that she found herself Jesus gave her hope he gave us hope because he what she wasn't going to be judged and neither of us are going to be judged if we put our trust in him we put our trust in Jesus Jesus says I am the light of the world whoever comes to me will not walk in darkness but will have the light take light take the light of Christ into your own life first and into the world around us you'll be watching Le Waitakahu and this is Word on Monday have a great week May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face continually shine upon you as you seek and follow after him this week. Amen.